attention McDonald's shoppers, I don't want to disturb you, but right on down the street, there's a slaughterhouse that serves you, all these dead bodies that they chop up in the back, but I bet you be a gas by your hair inside your Big Mac. While innocent pigs trapped in that truck in trouble No different from my dog, all they want is love and cuddles So no, I won't be muzzled, call the cops, I can't be subtle Rest in peace to Regan Russell, we gon' carry on your struggle, vegan power This is a place where they abuse animals I'm tired of people using animals for entertainment They're not here for our entertainment, they have their own interests People say we're breaking the law by storming? How do you think women got the right? How do you think slavery was abolished? People stood up and broke the laws because they're, they're stupid laws. This is my dad. Hey, yo, they got plant-based murder-free burgers just across the street. Google that shit. Live long and prosper with that vegan fuel inside you. Peace. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> the hell is that all about? Let me explain. So just a few days ago, an animal rights activist by the name of Regan Russell was murdered at the slaughterhouse behind me. She was run over by a truck full of pigs who she was here trying to protect. She was here to give water to animals dying of thirst and often struggling to breathe and often not breathing when they arrive in these steel coffins on hot sweltering summer days. These trucks are empty and the pigs that were inside them are already being sent to the gas chambers behind me. And that's something that hits particularly close to home for me as the grandson of an Auschwitz survivor who lost eight of his family members to the gas chambers, the slave labor camps, and the firing squads of the Holocaust. And yes, I just compared humans to pigs because we have a hell of a lot in common, not just like watermelons and bananas, uh, but we actually share a lot of DNA with each other. Um, pigs are highly intelligent mammals, as exemplified by the fact that pigs are capable of understanding written visual symbols and even numbers. They like listening to music, and pig mothers will even sing to their babies, although their uh, lullaby sound a little bit more like dubstep than traditional nursery rhymes. <laughs> Officially, pigs are estimated to have the intelligence of three-year-old human children, although it often seems like pigs are smarter than a hell of a lot of human adults. And to top it all off, pigs sound spine-tinglingly like human children when they're screaming out in agony and pain. In the slaughterhouse where Regan Russell was murdered, as is the case throughout much of North America and Europe, pigs are first sent to the gas chambers, which is supposed to knock them unconscious, and often does not. They are then stabbed in the throats while fully conscious, which is supposed to kill them relatively quickly, and often does not. They are then dumped into tanks of boiling hot water, to burn off the hairs that they have on their skin, just like us, and they are frequently fully conscious, kicking, screaming, inhaling, and drowning in burning hot water while that happens. 10,000 pigs are murdered in that gruesome manner every single day in just this slaughterhouse alone. Approximately four million pigs are killed around the world every 24 hours. For newborn pigs who are sick and might not grow up to be profitable enough to be slaughtered as they normally are as six-month-old babies, it is standard procedure to dispose of their lives by picking them up by their baby hind legs and slamming their heads against the ground repeatedly until they slowly and painfully die from the broken bones and hemorrhaging. If you don't believe me, I could show you footage of that entire process, but that would probably get this entire video censored by the policies of Facebook and Instagram, which suppress our ability to show you the graphic reality of where animal foods come from. All while Facebook, which owns Instagram, will gladly take hundreds of millions of dollars from the corporations and farmers who are torturing and killing animals, so long as they put barbecue sauce on the corpses, make it look nothing like a dead animal's carcass, and call it meat instead. Now, if you're somebody who still eats pigs or other animals, let me just say this to you. I don't think you're evil or you're a horrible human being just because you're eating the way we were all programmed to as children. I know that we're all born into a society that brainwashes us from a very early age to think that these animals should be treated with love and kindness. Well, these animals, well, they exist to become food. And don't ask how they became food. And if you do, we'll give you a BS answer that they came from some happy farm and lived a happy life under a rainbow somewhere. Whereas the reality is that 99% of the animals we consume come from the mutilation and torture facilities known as factory farms. And even the 1% that don't, the kind of dead animal body parts that are twice as expensive and are only consumed by rich people will end up on the exact same slaughter trucks and are sent to the exact same slaughterhouses. But even if you don't care at all about animals, like the cat 
cows being unloaded from the truck behind me to be murdered at this slaughterhouse here in Toronto. The fact is that eating their body parts also kills humans. And I don't just mean the people who consume them via cancer and heart attacks. You know, if there's anyone that thinks Regan Russell is the first human victim of the animal exploitation industry, ask yourself this. Imagine for a moment what it's like to work in these slaughterhouses. Working a job that involves stabbing animals to death for eight plus hours a day and then chopping up their bodies will cause post-traumatic stress disorder in nearly all of the workers in these murder factories. And that trauma that people who eat animals demand these workers undergo in order to do the killing that you're too scared or too much of an animal lover to do yourself has been empirically proven to lead to higher rates of suicide, violent crime, domestic abuse, child abuse, and even rape in surrounding communities. On top of that, these slaughterhouses have become epicenters of the COVID-19 pandemic, all while cleaner, disease-free, plant-based meat options have become available nearly everywhere in America, and Canada, and Europe, and much of the planet. And I have news for everyone who's been posting black squares on Instagram and hashtagging Black Lives Matter all the time, as if that by itself is gonna make any kind of real difference. Not that it's bad to make a statement against racism. Maybe you'll influence some of your friends and family to be a little bit less racist. Maybe not. <laughs> but at the end of the day, that's all it is. It's a statement. You should know that as far as your actions go, when you give your money to demand that slaughterhouses stay in business, just like a disproportionate amount of the victims of police violence are people of color, a disproportionate amount of slaughterhouse workers are also not white and it's not a coincidence. <laughs> because who would ever want to work in a slaughterhouse except someone who's got few other job options? And because of the history of economic inequality that began in the era of slavery and segregation and continues to this day, white people are still more likely to have wealth passed down to them from their parents and to therefore have a shot at getting a higher education and a higher paying, less bloody job. And to everyone out there who genuinely cares about black people, I have news for you. If you're pissed off that a disproportionate amount of the dozens of unarmed people who are killed by police every year are black, I hope that you also care that an extremely disproportionate amount of the nine million people who die every year from malnutrition and starvation are in Africa. And that's not a coincidence, that's the continuing legacy of colonialism. Please study history if you want to understand how. But how do your supermarket choices in the present affect that? Animal farming is a primary cause of world hunger for the same reason it is the primary cause of habitat destruction and mass extinction. It simply takes astronomically more land to grow the same amount of protein by feeding plants to animals and then eating the animals' dead bodies than it does to just eat the plant-based protein yourself, the way that humans and other primates are biologically suited to do. By demanding that up to 18 times as much land be used to grow animal flesh for your consumption, you are helping to drive up the cost of land and drive up the cost of food to prices that the world's poorest people cannot afford. And that explains why 82% of starving children in the world live in countries that are exporting animal feed and dead animals to be consumed by privileged people in the West. And most of those countries that are experiencing mass starvation are in the human motherland of Africa. Blame capitalism and the reality of supply and demand all you want for that. But that's the reality of the world we live in. And when you make life and death choices at the supermarket or at the takeout counter, you're either part of the solution or part of the problem. And if you think I'm going off topic here, bear in mind that Regan Russell was marching with Black Lives Matter just weeks before she was killed. And just like animal rights activists shouldn't ignore the suffering of our fellow humans, many of the leading voices for human rights are not just speaking up for animals, they are taking action in their everyday lives. Which is why so many civil rights leaders like Rosa Parks, Angela Davis, Cesar Chavez, Coretta Scott King, and Martin Luther King Jr.'s son, Dexter Scott King, have made the decision to leave dead animals off of their plate. So all Regan was saying, all we're saying, is that if we don't need to kill animals to live, then why would we? Especially when you not only don't need to eat animals, but eating their dead bodies could massively increase your chances of dying from one of the two leading causes of death in the world, cancer and heart attacks. Not to mention, for the exact same reason that it chokes blood flow to the veins and arteries of the heart, it can also be a major contributing factor to erectile dysfunction type 2 diabetes, and obesity in general. Killing animals is literally killing us, while letting the animals live gives us a better chance of living long and prospering. Go vegan for Regan.
Mother, mother, there's too many of you crying. Brother, 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 there's far too many of you dying. This is the only way you can expose yes. it. It's private property. Yes. Yes. It's just like, how do we know what they're doing yeah. in there to the pigs, yeah. except the people who work there tell us, yeah. and uh, we get video footage of it. They won't let us in, because no. they know that what they're doing is wrong. You know we've got to find a way. People in Montreal, Chicago, to bring some Italy, love Argentina, here and countless other countries have an individual for bringing You see, war is not the answer, for only love can conquer hate. You know we've got to find a way. R-E-G-A-N should resonate, and they have, around the world. Picket lines and picket signs don't punish me. With brutality, talk to me so you can see what's going on. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Right on. So the meat industry kills the vegan animal activists. Say that out loud. Sister and I are so proud because she doesn't belong to us anymore. She belongs to all these people here. Who would they judge us? Simply cause our hair is long. Oh, you know we've got to find the one. Bring some This is her legacy. We won't let it die. We'll protect it. Thank you. Thank you. Don't punish me with brutality. Come on, talk to me. You can see what's going on. Yeah, what's going on? Tell me what's going on. I'll tell you what's going on. It changed my life. My daughter changed my life. I taught her in grade seven and eight, and in later life, I became the pupil. She was the greatest teacher I've ever had. Please miss her, and thank you all so much, knowing that you are all in the same boat that I'm in, does make it somewhat comforting on this voyage, which is a new one to me. Thank you. What's your name? Regan. Regan, beautiful activist trying to give water to the pigs. Mm. 